glamorized and embraced by Hollywood, feared in the underworld. Benjamin Bugsy Siegel was one of the most powerful men in America. He was also one of the most hated. The man who gave birth to Las Vegas was gunned down in the luxurious home of his glamorous lover. Almost 80 years later, his murder remains unsolved. Who killed Bugsy? Ancient darkness is breaking through into our reality. The overlords are coming. Their demons united, they'll stop at nothing to tear our world to shreds. And the only thing that can stop them is the power of metal. You have been chosen by the gods of metal to lead this crusade of finger-shredding fury. You must write the sick riffs, craft the awesome lyrics, find unholy rhythms, and set the heads banging. Show the overlords that their darkness is nothing compared to yours. Gods of Metal is a co-op deck building game for one to four players. You and your bandmates must work to create the most powerful band in human history. Find mystical instruments of legend, outlandish costumes to improve your powers, and recruit mascots to help you battle the overlords. Find the power of pure decibels and use them to destroy your enemies by crafting songs that will literally blow their minds. Form a band. Save the world. Gods of Metal. Now on Kickstarter. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the coffee shop. I'm your host, Doc Boylock. The coffee is hot, so is the weather. So are the chicks on the barista of the week this week. 
see who's in the chat here. Oh, Glenn Fleming is in the house. Good to see you, Glenn. Welcome, as always. Nikki is here, misspelling my name horribly. Wonderful, wonderful. Abu Grizz is here. Stephen B is here from Bold Cat Studios. Wonderful to see all you guys. Hey, uh, what a week it's been. So, real quick, I'm going to touch on something, and then I want to get past it. Uh, my condolences to the family of Ed Pisker, uh, a comic legend, took his own life. Not going to be talking about that on the show, though. What I am going to talk about is I've heard this now, and I only bring it up because I've heard it on two different live streams. And i got to do a little myth-busting here. If someone you know is talking about <clears throat> deleting themselves, you cannot get in the mindset of, oh, people who talk about it aren't actually going to do it. They're attention-seeking. That's a myth. It's a lie. It's quite the opposite. They are much more likely to follow through on it. So don't take that lightly. You cannot even entertain a sense of humor or distance about that topic. If you or someone you know is in the depths of that kind of despair or depression, get help. Reach out. There is help and there's a better tomorrow out there. That's all I'm going to say about it. But do not fall for that old urban legend that people who talk about it don't do it. Because that's a lie. Hey, what's up, Graham Adam? All right, so also, I got to rant for just a second here. I mean, holy buckets. I'm a Christian. Easter is the most sacred holiday of the year. And Joe Biden decided that he would officially name that day as Trans Visibility Day. Now, that's in the... Uh, above and beyond, you know, all the other days and months that are set aside for that community, uh, for their visibility. Did you really have to try to co-op the holiest day in the Christian year? And then also, hey, Shadowhawk, what's up, buddy? And then also ban Christian iconography from the little art contest they had at the White House. You know, something's gone strangely wrong. Uh, just remember this stuff come November. That's all I'm going to say about it. <clears throat> I got to bring somebody out, though. <clears throat> I don't do this show by myself. I'm too ugly to do it by myself. Let me bring out some looks. Rose? Well, we're going, we don't need Rose. <laughs> Gordon Shumway, nice to meet you. Interested in a new Buick? Nonsense. I've not yet begun to defile myself. I'll make you famous. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, what's going on, Tanner? <laughs> Cheers. Oh, much. Hey, real quick. Cheers, my brother. I just want to caveat off what you said. And if you're a veteran out there and you're in crisis and there's something going on, hey, 988, that's it. That's it. You just dial 988 um, and there's someone there for you, you know, 24-7. Um, Absolutely. Just had to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, <clears throat> if you're not a veteran, 911 works. Go to your nearest emergency room. You know, they will take care of you. All right. Don't make a permanent decision for a temporary problem. All right, no. that's enough of that. Holy cow, that's what a week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, geez. You're not, Tanner, you're not Tanner, kidding. Tanner. <clears throat> My God. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I kind of got a workout this week. You know, my, my yeah. John Deere ride mower died in the tornado. Oh, man. So you're using a push mower, aren't you? It's this wide. <laughs> oh no! And it's electric. <laughs> it's electric. <laughs> I had to. It's electric. I, I mean, what? The environmentalists get you, or what, what's going on here? No, my my, my wife got a good deal on it. My wife got a good deal on it for the price of fixing my John Deere riding mower. I point out. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so I'm 
out there with that thing and it takes three i run the battery dead three times oh no so you know by the time i finish the first part i did is already looking like it needs a little love and but then i also got out with the hedge trimmers and i did the hedging and i hate hedging do you remember in boot camp before boys and girls if you don't know when you get to boot camp you still have to be medically cleared to begin training and until you are medically cleared, they don't do all that stuff where it's push-ups and, you know, they, they, where they grind you to dust. But they find other ways to get you. Oh, yeah. One of them is hold that piece of paper out in front of you until I say stop. You don't <laughs> think a piece of paper is heavy until you hold it up there for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Right? Oh, yeah. It'll get you. <laughs> so I had a flashback of that, Tad. I'm holding the hedge. At eye level, getting the holly in front of the house. <laughs> Holy cow, was I sore the next day. And then I had to skip a day and go back and do it because the rain came in, you know. I had to get back oh, out yeah. there. The hedge is up by the mailbox. Buddy, I'm here to tell you, uh, there's nothing that will tell you you're old, like being out of shape enough to feel just doing basic yard work. <laughs> well, but I feel like the Hulk today. My muscles, ugh. Last couple of days, I've been putting together these seven foot, uh, you know, shelving units for the garage, you know, so I could organize things a little bit more. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, you know, on this, it, it's, it's metal, it's all metal, you know, so I'm laying on this thing cause I got it on the floor and I'm putting it together, you know, piece by piece. And, uh, and yeah, you know, I, I got back issues and neck issues. So like I was feeling it and I, I'd stand up for a little bit. <sighs> grab grab the uh the screwdriver uh, yeah. look at my wife she comes out and she's like what's wrong i'm like i gotta get back down on the ground <laughs> this is the screwdriver muscle right here right here yeah. feel it <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's oh, amazing to me how did I go, Tanner, from 20 miles with a 50-pound pack on my back and barely right? breaking a sweat to I got to take a break <laughs> if I go to the mailbox? How did that even happen? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> now, I, my hedger is electric. And uh, normally, I I, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go electric, you know, I, I I like the ones with the big cord. You plug in, you know, the extension cord, and then yep. you just go. However, yep. now my wife also picked up out the, the the weed whacker, and oh, wow. she got one with a battery charger. Now, I still have kids. So the only reason I have it still is because it's hilarious watching them turn that thing on high, get like a quarter of a uh, building, and then it start dying on them. And they're like, what? Oh, I'm never going to get this done. <laughs> As I was sitting there like. I don't even own a weed eater anymore. I, I've seen like uh, there's the boring channel. This guy goes around and he rehabilitates bad lawns. He does it for free, you know. <laughs> And I've watched him. He's an expert with his weed eater. All right. But let me tell you my story, my history with weed eaters. <laughs> Cord breaks. And I can't just tap, tap and it. Come. No, no. I have to disassemble. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I have had those, those moments. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Every single time like, I've ever used like, one of those tap. damn little <laughs> contraptions. Yeah. Yep. Every time, you know, like oh, every man. time, <laughs> yes, they are evil. They tease you with the prospect of a finely manicured edge on your lawn. <laughs> Except that you're going to have to, you know, do this and rewire the thing and restart it a thousand times just to go to the front of your driveway. No, <laughs> done with it. No, 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 no. <laughs> No more weed eating for me. I pay somebody to do it once a year. That's it. I got I got a chuckle out of that manicor. <laughs> I have a yard machine push mower. It always starts on the first pull. I need a new weed eater. I don't like the echo I have when they go by. Really, yeah, I hear you. 
Yeah, my hair fell out from weed eating, y'all. That's just how it is. <laughs> uh, machines hate me. Things hate me. Inanimate objects hate me. It's a true story. Uh, Manicor, of course, is on the side of the enemy in that particular battle. Uh, he's on the side of the machines. Damn it. Um, yeah, they hate me. Computers hate in me. In an alternate world where Skynet has taken over, we have a leader in his name. Is Doc Blaylock. <laughs> Anything more complicated than a hammer uh, is too much for me. <laughs> now, having said that, I have been forced over the years, as all young men growing up who are poor in the military know firsthand, you learn how to fix a few things on your car uh, on your own. So I can replace the alternator on a car like that. Um, you know, uh, tune up, oil change, battery, change the tire, of course, all that stuff. You, you just learn by necessity. Right. But as a young man <clears throat> living in the deep south, stationed on Paris Island, my U joint went out in my 76 Nova. <clears throat> Y'all, I don't mean, oh, it's squeaking, I need to replace it. No, I mean it dropped the drive shaft. <laughs> so. <laughs> Put in a good word. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I managed to get a ride to the local hardware or the auto parts place, and I get a new U joint. Never done U joints before, but it seems pretty straightforward, right? Little T ninety cup with little bearings in it, and you just slide it on there, and you you know it's not a big deal. But mind you, this is in the sand. It's 112 degrees, humid. I got a pregnant wife sitting in the car going, are you done yet? <laughs> no, I'm not done yet. Do you see me <laughs> sitting in the driver's seat driving? Anyway, <laughs> I keep trying to slide the little the little cup cap on there, and a bearing would go, dink, and fall. <laughs> dink. <laughs> Before I finally realized you could just do it straight up and turn the thing and Oh no, that so was I like me with that, but that shelving unit I was telling you about, like I kept yes, dropping the little screws and then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so yeah, you know, I, I just had to tell every woman I've ever been with, if you're looking for Mr. Fix it. I'm not him. <laughs> if you cast yourself open, I can sew you up. I can, I can, I can resect a tendon. I can do all these wonderful things for you medically. Don't ask me to freaking change a light bulb. That shit ain't going to happen. I'm not that guy. <laughs> you ever watch the red green show? Why does that sound familiar? Well, it, it's Canadian television. So, you know, we definitely uh -huh. got it in Michigan and uh, uh -huh. the, he they had uh it was an older gentleman it was always on like public access you know I, I i guess that's you know because they always had canadian stuff on public access um you know when i was growing up in michigan but anyhow he's an older guy and uh you know he wears flannel and he's got the beard and and he's yeah yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. he used to do this segment you know and he'd say you know if the women don't find you handsome they'll sure find you handy because he fixed everything with duct tape <laughs> yeah i remember that guy yeah, yeah. it was a satire yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and that's that's me man i'm telling you i can't duct tape it it ain't worth it keeping might, it might something. not be pretty but hey it'll be functional <laughs> that's right so, boys and girls, we uh we had to retire our returning champion brunette for our Bay Barista of the Week. We have new contestants this week. Let's check it out. All right, here we go. So, representing the brunettes of the world, we've got this young uh, lady here who we caught at an inopportune moment. Uh, but, you know, she was kind enough to sit still and let us take a picture. I, anyway, then, then there's the redhead. Hello. So that's our ginger. And then our lovely blonde, who was supposed to be having coffee, but she misunderstood and just, you know, went and stood outside in the shower. I don't know why. You can't take a blonde anywhere. So the poll is over on the Madness <coughs> Comic Network on YouTube. Be sure to cast your vote. 
for the brunette, the redhead, or the blonde for our Bay Barista of the Week. So I actually didn't mean, I didn't mean to click that one, but as long as we're here, what the hell? <laughs> hey, well, since we're here. <laughs> well, <laughs> as long as we're here. So, yeah, um, been trying to reach you about your extended warranty. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. It, it struck me funny at the time. You should own a green car. All right, there you go. <laughs> There you go. There's your green car. <laughs> There's your green car, baby. Uh, look, everything is melting. This is obviously our fault. Quick, let's tax the shit out of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. My road rage is so bad, I wish I could Bluetooth to someone's car and talk trash to them through their speakers. Yes. Yes. I get, I get behind people, and, and here's what I hate. You're at a traffic light. And instead of everyone just moving out, they sit up eat. One goes, then the next one goes, then the next one goes. Don't do that. Everybody just... So I'll, I'll be behind somebody, and I'll scream, It's green! Just push all the pedals! One of them will make it go! <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Idiots. So, yeah, speaking of visibility, this is not a gun. It's a trans knife. <laughs> Tanner, this one's for you, though, brother, because <clears throat> we live in this era. In case of bad music. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> break that glass. <laughs> I'd be shattering the hell out of that glass. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even be waiting for an emergency. I need that now. I need it in my life. <laughs> Me, working 70 hours a week to keep up with 7% inflation, listening to a 79-year-old sexual predator tell me how Ukraine is important in daily American life. Knowing full well his motive is to protect his personal investment so his crackhead son can continue to get a 50000 a month and kickbacks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's, lo that's literally where your brain kind of goes. Them, you think your right to self-defense is more important than my right to feel safe? Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes. <laughs> And, and and let me proofread that meme because you spelled defense. I didn't spell anything wrong. I didn't. I know you didn't. I'm talking about the clown that made me. <laughs> you just stop filtering your pics. You go missing. We're looking for Miss America instead of Bigfoot. Come on, that's a true story. Stop <laughs> using the filters, boys and girls. Embrace how you look. It is what is it anyway. And there it was in my notifications. You have violated community standards for a meme that was posted four years ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't need you anymore. I'm woke now. That is the photo of woke progressivism right there. So, yeah, this is an oldie but a goodie. <clears throat> Dad, there's a moth outside of the bathroom door. Can you get rid of it? Please hurry because I'm going to cry. Dad? Dad? Dad is dead. You're next. Love moth. <laughs> <laughs> that was a dad with a great sense of humor right there. You can't torment your kids. Just saying. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> now, Abba, what do you what do you mean by you guys are rigging these? Because you know, you should know by now. Uh, if I had rigged it, it would just be three blondes. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I, I made dot cough. <laughs> I don't even get to vote. How can I rig it? You it's, weird. it's weird. 
you would think with the entire internet at your disposal, just looking up, you know, sexy blonde, sexy brunette, it would be easy to find things that, no, no, you got to go through pages of stuff. You have to find the, the appropriate level of hotness. You have to find them where they're not pornographic, but neither are they like, you know, uh, Southern Living Magazine. You know, you got to get that sweet spot right there. You know, it's harder than you think. It's the Goldilocks zone. Also a blonde. Yes. yes. (laughs) (laughs) You're fired, Tanner. I'm no, I'm going to hell. <laughs> oh, I just can't do it. I can't do it. Look, my cash app is right there scrolling across the bottom. If you would like to tip the doctor, you know, a cup of coffee, I'm not going to say no. I'm not yeah, say no. I mean, think of all he has to put up with. Me. Yeah. So, me. So, I got, <laughs> so I got something in the mail. Uh, uh, from uh, this guy, Tanner Hurley. <laughs> Some guy. just Look at that logo, by the way. And I don't know if it'll show up, but all of the black on her costume is glitter. Hello. Anyway, Tanner was good enough to send me a copy of his book. Uh, and it is fantastic. It's a very fast read. But it's very cool looking. I particularly love this this uh, this particular scene. This was awesome, Tanner. Thank you very much. Welcome, my friend. I, I am uh, I am absolutely in debt to you, sir. All right, now I'm I've showed it like- off. Yep, I sh- I showed it off on an unboxing. I've now showed it off on the show. I have read it. Now it's going to get bagged and boarded. So that when Tanner finally kicks off, uh, <laughs> it's so true. That's the only way it's going to be. <laughs> and, uh, I only hope I've got you know? my heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, we've uh, we, we've had a busy week here in the house. All right. Um, the wife came out and was helping me with the yard work. And she managed to kill the leaf blower. Uh, the leaf blower that we've had for 16 years finally gave up the ghost. <clears throat> now, I'm not sure what kind of leaf blower she bought to replace it, but it came in a box this big. That, that seems suspect. Now, based on the lawnmower the she ball. bought, based on the lawnmower she bought to replace my John Deere, I do not hold out high hopes. <laughs> Just say it. Just say it. Oh man, that blows Evo says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it may be a hairdryer without a heating heating element. Here's <laughs> <laughs> hoping it blows. My last one <laughs> could have blown the Mayflower across the Atlantic. I'm just saying it was <laughs> <laughs> So I hope. Here's hoping. I'm not going to use the damn thing. It's just... <clears throat> All right, Tanner, are you ready? I'm always ready. Greetings and salutations. I'm Tanner Hurley with another great moments in comic history. And today I have. Oop. <laughs> As I knocked the camera <laughs> down. <laughs> today I have a 90s run of Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Hell yeah. what, make, what makes this a great moments in comic history? Well, Okay, if you go back and you look at Wizard and you had, you know, 
McFarlane and Liefeld and Lee and all these guys dominating, uh, you know, the, the top 10 slot. You also had in the top 10 Guardians of the Galaxy by Jim Valentino, very underrated uh, image founder and artist. Okay. So, and what was his claim to fame? His claim to fame was the Guardians of the Galaxy from Marvel Comics. Okay. He's also the creator of Shadowhawk, but um, that that's for another creating such characters. I mean, as Force, I, I'm sure he looks familiar. You know, the last few uh, Avengers movies, he was a villain that showed up in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Even taken on the uh, Captain America shield. <clears throat> Beautiful inks by uh, Art Tiber. Artie Bear. <laughs> um, but this run was amazing because you had awesome artists like Kevin West, the successor after oh, yeah. uh, the, the founding of Marvel Comics. Yeah, and also... this was this was the Guardians uh, that I kind of grew up with, you know, Van oh, yeah, Tash, this is Nikki, yep, Martin X, Charlie Seven, Rancor, <sighs> um, even. Uh, Like the great granddaughter of Wolverine, I mean, these oh, yeah. Rancor. Rain, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. These were gr these were great, great comics, you know. Heck yeah! But yes, who uh, now? Who was the main artist on this run? I don't remember. Um, for the most part, it was Jim Valentino. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. So, like, he was doing, wasn't Jim Valentino doing the Guardians part of the Korvac saga back in the day? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. And Perez did the Avengers side. Yes. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Hell yeah. That's the stuff that, so no, you, you didn't don't go. have it. Go out there, <laughs> pick it up. It's a great read. It's cheap. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, that wasn't it's just all uh, around good fun. Yeah, and that wasn't, by the way, run to the comic book store and get those. No, no, you had to go to the spinner rack at the drugstore, the convenience store, or or uh, Kmart or wherever, and, oh, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> there was no guarantee the next one was going to be there next month. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was <laughs> always like an Easter egg. Yeah. It was always you didn't, a you didn't find those holes, or you didn't fill those holes until you found a comic book shop. You know. <laughs> yep. 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 Exactly right. I wonder. Uh, I wonder when LCS has actually became a thing. I mean, I know they were around in the '90s and the '80s, but well, they they uh, they propped up in prominent prominence in uh, the early '80s. Um, I get you know they they were kind. Of of a thing in the late 70s um but uh but they they became huge because of the indie comics boom of the 80s yeah i need uh, to there, talk there's to, your, your trivia <laughs> yeah i need to i want to talk to uh john's long box and my friend charles who is a mega collector uh and he's one of those finicky collectors too like you know he doesn't just collect comic books it's got to be a very specific thing that he's after like he's working on a whole run of batman uh, oh man, uh, he has every Playboy from Maryland all the way to today, all of it. Oh my gosh! Uh, um, and you know he just—he's persnickety about his collection. It, it it he measures it not by number of comic books by the but by the ton. How much do they weigh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm jealous. <laughs> I think he moved three tons of comic books uh, when he moved this last time. Jeez. Um, so yeah, uh, you know those mega collectors, and he and of course he's he works at a comic book store, and he always has as a second job uh, done that. So I think I want to know the actual history of LCSs, not just what was the first one, but you know when did it become a thing that that uh the distribution started working so that a lcs could operate that way that'd be a good topic for a show well, you know what i i uh will uh we should revisit that next uh next episode and then i'll even our great moments 
I'll uh, I'll throw in some more history, you know, historical data. Let's do that. Let's do that because that is a great moment in comics. We it is finally go and get your back issues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. We'll, we'll dedicate an issue to uh, to the LCS. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Here's to the LCSs. If you're still hanging in there, God bless you. You're doing the oh, Lord's work. Yeah, ain't that the truth? <laughs> and you know, you think uh, I, there's there's nothing I want to collect from the mainstream right now. Uh, there's a lot of indies uh, that are friends of mine that I support and people I respect, but maybe we're not you know friends. We don't hang out. <laughs> But uh, a lot of good stuff. But I haven't read all the old stuff from back in the day when it was great. It's all still there waiting to find a home and come and be read and appreciated. I would like to do that. I would very much like to do that. Just got to find an LCS that I can trust. I don't trust this local one. I don't know anything. Yeah, unfortunately, I got to drive all the way to Savannah to get, uh, go to an LCS. And uh, it's wonderful as it is. You're, not, you're underwater, Tanner. So. What? Can you hear me? Okay, now? there you are. There you okay. are. Your, your mic went underwater for a minute there. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fixed now. But uh, I, I have to drive over an hour to go to an LCS. <sighs> yeah, yeah. And it's that's rough. But uh, but when I get there, oh, it's nice because their their dollar bins are rocking. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think what I'm going to start doing because I, I'm not kidding, I don't like my local comic book store guy. <clears throat> this is the guy I used to get my comics from when I got robbed when I was on vacation. He bought my collection. Oh, he knew it, he knew it was mine. Well, I mean, it wasn't marked. You knew it was mine. Who marks oh. their books? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, um, but, you know, my buddy Charles, he runs an even bigger and better comic book store. Now, he, he's an hour and a half away from here. But what I can do is, hey, go in early. Let's go through the dollar bin together. You pull this stuff for me and I'll send you some Heck money. Yeah. And then when you come Heck down yeah. <laughs> twice a year for a visit, big old dump pile. <clears throat> oh, man. That's wonderful. Actually, <laughs> it's a good way to do it. It's a good way to do it. You don't mark your books. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, always on the inside cover <laughs> with a big shiny. Usually I had in red. Now, yeah. Now, I had two different collections. I had the one I collected when I was young. It doesn't come from a comic book store. And there were no long boxes. You just saved them in a shoe box, you know? Yeah. Uh, that was my Avengers run. That was my Warlord by Mike Grell. That was uh, 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 the Fantastic Four, Captain America, Thor. I'm get my glasses. I'll be back. All right, sweetheart. Um, and then, of course, you know, you grow up. I went off of the military, and the mom did what moms do. Poof, gone. Oh, so, no. Oh, uh, screw it. So back in the 90s. I started collecting again. And of course my go-to title was the Avengers. But in that I had Venom lethal protector, all three variant covers. I fell for it. I had spawn number one. Uh, I had, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, Secret Wars number eight with the first appearance of the black costume. I had all these great books that are desirable. And a thief knew exactly where to get me. You know, I had a safe. The safe didn't get broken into. They couldn't get into it <laughs> with, with you know, some gold and jewelry and, you know, stuff in there. They took my collection, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's rough, especially when you got all those uh, beautiful uh, George Perez Avengers comics. Oh, man. I had the Ego Star Trek figures, the whole bridge crew. Oh, all oh of damn. Them. I had the Romulan Bird of Prey uh, from the original series that had the digital sound effects on it. Uh, you know, had all this cool stuff and it ended up back at the LCS where it came. <laughs> I staple a sheet with the <laughs> Hey, you got a plan in action right there. <laughs> you know, that's some smart thinking right there. 
one thing I did learn from uh, someone, uh, it wasn't Charles, but someone else that collected, you know, when you get a, uh, a pair of shoes or whatever, it comes with those little silicone packets that says, do not eat. Mm -hmm. They're, they're in there to absorb moisture. You drop one or two of those in every long box and it prevents the paper from browning and aging. Huh? Who knew? Yeah, that's like my collection of history of the Second World War magazine binders. When I got home from the Air Force, they were gone. I think, yeah, yeah. Oh, the moms man. of the world. <laughs> moms of the world. Hey, mom, if you're out there listening, don't throw your kid's comic book collection away. The greatest threat to comics in all of history is all a mom history. who said, <laughs> you don't need them anymore. Right. Yep, a, mom, a mom cleaning house looking for extra space is the worst threat. <laughs> It's an actual thing. So, anyway, this has been another. <laughs>
different show just for him. Okay. Uh, met him the other day uh, on a stream. We crossed paths several times in the chats, uh, uh, but we never talked. And so we finally got to talk. He's a cool guy. Very cool guy. So I'm looking forward to having him out here on the show to talk about his thing. Y'all know how we do though here on the show. You know, we're, we, we don't, we're not typically a shill stream. Uh, uh, we do have guests on. I like to talk to creators about themselves, not their creation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I don't, I don't always want to get someone on so we can look at their campaign. I just want to get somebody on to talk to them, probe their brain. What goes on in your head? What went wrong to make you think doing comic books was a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah, Gray Wolf, that's the same thing I'm doing. The uh, <clears throat> the book is is that I'm working on right now is 99% done. Uh, Pariah was finished before we went live with it. Uh, what if they create themselves? If they do that... <clears throat> Then just ka-ching, ka-ching, baby, cash in those checks. Abo Grizz, of course, is a fantastic uh, creator with yeah. a great series of book, Shards of Yigdrasil. Yig 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 say it, Tanner. Yigdrasil. Yigdrasil, yes, thank you. <laughs> My brain locked up on me. I had a Biden moment, forgive me. <laughs> it's Splinters of Yggdrasil, right? Yeah. Or is it Shards? I forget. Anyway, it's really good. Abo, you got to get us a new trailer for you, brother. Yeah, yeah, we do need a new trailer. <laughs> <coughs> we need the new one. So we've reached that point in the show, Tanner. I'm going to play a couple of commercials here. Splinters of you still. Yes, thank you, Abo. Uh, we're going <laughs> to play a couple of uh, commercials here for some friends of ours. But then after that, we're going to throw it open to the uh, chat if you want to come on and uh, talk about the issues of the day or just be, you know, be your normal, lovely selves. We don't care. We'll be right back after these messages. The future. The final frontier. It has never been so uncertain as now. AI, VR, haptic wear, nanotechnology, mass destruction with a remote click. Now we are finally seeing the true potential and dangers of an ever-connected and overly policed hyper-technological world. Have we finally become the architect of our own demise? Is there still hope? Welcome to the future. Welcome to Punk Droid. City Magazine is just really pulling out all the stops, man. Your guys' production value of this of this magazine has gone insane. I mean, look at the. I mean, I remember when you guys it was black and white. Even when it was black and white, I thought your quality was great. But damn, they have just. I mean, they just really stepping it up and on. Look at this. James Corbett, boys. James Corbett, genuinely cutting. Um... But also funny and obviously just chaotic and, and very fun. I love Flip City. It has brought new types of badassery and integrity to the print medium.
Mr. Chris, what up? Also, Chris Kale from rock and roll band Five Finger Death Punch. Heard that you're about to launch your newest board game, Gods of Metal, where you take on the persona of different metal musicians to stop the overlords and their demons from taking over reality. I think I know a metal musician that can help you fight those overlords and those demons. That is me, Chris Kale. So, shout out to you, Chris. Shout out to all of the Laughing Rogue crew. And shout out to Gods of Metal. Uh, I will be in there taking over reality from the demons and the overlords. Chris Kale. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, hey, Steve. Hey. Let me switch my audio around. Take me out for two secs, Doc. Copy that. Welcome, Stephen B. What's, What's going, going on, on? brother? Uh, not much. Uh, there's a convention coming up. Oh, yeah? Are you, uh, are you going to a convention or are you going to set up at a convention? Set up. All right. Where are you going? It's going to be in uh, August 10th, <coughs> nice. I think, and it's at the same place uh, if any toys uh, convention. All right. And what city is that? Uh, it's here. It's here in Florida in okay. Osceola, Her in Osceola uh, Heritage Park. All right. All right. Go see Stephen B. Buy some merchandise. Yeah. Matacor, what's going on, my brother from down under? How you going, Doc? I'm doing, I'm doing good, man. It's good to see you. Yeah, you too. Likewise. Gentlemen, how you going? G'day, Stephen, Tanner, Pops. What's going on, brother? G'day. Yeah, G'day. <laughs> mm. So for those of you that don't know, um, Manticore and his, uh, and his crew are still hard at work on... Remind me. Remind me. I Artifice Reanimate. Artifice Reanimate. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, I, actually did some, I actually did some refining of like the script today because mm -hmm. we're going to have to reimagine the first 30 pages from the beginning again. So I figured I'd take the opportunity to get right in there and reimagine it from yeah a different right perspective. On. Right on. Right oh, on. Heck More yeah. of a Sarah Lucas stuff, yeah. But uh, for those who don't know, you know, not to bring up a touchy subject, but uh, the, a certain individual who turned out to be a criminal was associated yeah. with the book before anyone knew about it. And being the gentleman that they are, Smirk and Manicor said, hell no, we're not putting this dude's work out. So they took a big hit, but they've been striving behind the scenes to get this thing across the finish line. And I can't wait. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. I like it, it I, to start with it was disappointing and like I feel bad because like there was a lot of money that was invested on both parts myself and Smirk the Alien more so Smirk the Alien but um yeah he like invested a lot of money and then the artwork had to be scrapped so wow. yeah but it, that's rough. it's sort of a blessing in disguise really yeah if you look yeah at it gives you that opportunity to, gives you that opportunity to step back and take a fresh look and, and yeah. come at it fresh and we and weren't exactly happy of the direction Vic, the, the individual was going anyway. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's better to be able to, yeah. Yes. Be true yeah. to the vision and, yeah. Absolutely. Listen, that's that's a cautionary tale, boys and girls. If you're a writer out there and your pistoler kind of takes your work and runs off in his own direction, fire him. It's not <laughs> his story. It's yours. It's a red flag, a big one. 
No, yeah, it's yeah. one of the like I, w- I learned a few valuable lessons this time around. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, yep, yep, yep. It is, oh, I'm telling you, it's one huge learning experience putting together comics. That that's for sure. It is. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I had uh, I've learned some hard lessons myself. Like I was cocky, man of core. When I came into this thing in this scene, I thought, "Hell, man! I used to a book a month. I can knock out a book in no time." <laughs> oh yeah. hell no! That was when I was just a penciler, not the writer, penciler, inker, editor. Oh, you know, nine yards. Huh? It's a hell of a lot more to it. <laughs> it's a lot involved when you actually yeah. look deeper and you get yeah. on on that on that level with it. Like you, you see all the little things. Yes, sir. Yes, what, sir. Would you, what would Dylan say? What was it? Embrace the minutia. Embrace the minutia. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it made me hate him, but but uh, he was right. So. Yeah. Little, little he, often, he often is, unfortunately. Yes, yeah, so a little backstory on that. You know, John Dillard is one of the best. Period. Full stop. There's no but or anything. He's just one of the best. However, when John Dillard starts ripping apart your artwork because you didn't focus on the background and do a good enough job on these details, he says, "No, nah, you have to embrace the minutia." I'm like, "Son of a bitch, he's right." So now I had, a, um, I had an experience with a color tutorial with with the man himself, and like I haven't colored since. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it again. I'll get back into it. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the, but the moral to the story is, it is a good thing to network with other artists if you're an artist and accept positive critique even if it tears you to pieces it's to make you better and i'm appreciative yeah. of it. like i had matt Barr look at a page for me matt is incredible yeah. incredible artist yeah. he's good and, uh, and uh he tore up one panel i had done and I, I i i took it upon myself to look at his uh uh yeah the joys of being dasher penciler dash inker dash <laughs> Yeah, oh. <laughs> but, I, but I took it upon myself to, to uh, one of the tricks I teach my art students, I teach art, is to flip the image, look at it in the mirror, look at it upside down, whatever you got to do to divorce your eye bias. Mm. So I flipped that image and looked at it and I'm like, holy God, what was I thinking? He was yeah. exactly right about everything he said. So I went back and made the necessary edits and it made the panel much better. So yeah, take that feedback. Now, if you're a writer, same thing. It is hard to get someone to sit and listen to your story or read your story because people don't want to read it. They don't want to. It's hard. But if you can find someone that's willing to read your work and give you constructive criticism, not nitpicking it, they don't like this. Like, I don't care about your likes. Right. Uh, I'm doing the book I want to do. So I don't care about what your preference is. But you tell yeah. me, do I have continuity? Is my dialogue engaging? <laughs> I think too, uh, like I- it's all in the cell as well. Like you know what I mean? Like it, it, it's like yeah, like hundred percent in the cell with your personality and right. how you deliver, like whatever you want to do, your elevator pitch or like the story, like the content of your actual like book. Yeah. Now I had someone ask. Well, it, this. No, I have a. You know, Abbo is absolutely right. You know, it's it's your style, you know, yeah. and uh, I think what a lot of artists need to, you know, kind of, you know, get in the in their head, not even in the back of their head, but, you know, just like seep it in there is it's called commercial art for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And you, and you got it. You got to love doing commercial art to, to yes. you know, enjoy this business. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a balance between striving for excellence and not letting good, uh, perfection get in the way of good enough. A, a panel is never going to be perfect unless you're George Perez. Um, <laughs> it's good enough. It's good enough. Now, I am famous, and Pops knows this, so does Tanner. I redrew probably 40% of Pariah uh, because, no, this panel's not good enough. No, this panel's like. And I would just keep redrawing and redrawing. There was one panel I redrew it a good five times. And remember, I'm doing this shit traditional. So now, I, I believe that. You know, I was I was talking with uh, Chris 
Chris Willett of uh, Satellite Girl fame. And, yeah. uh, you know, we were looking at pages of issue two and going over those last night. And he's like, you know, oh, I love this panel right here. And he's like, you know, it, it drives me nuts because, you know, I did it four times. And uh, before I got it right, uh -huh. he's like, you know, but, you know, do, do people, you know, understand these nuances? You know, probably not. <laughs> you know, and I was like, well, that's why, I, you know, <laughs> he's sitting there and he picks out everything. So we're talking for a long period of time and he's picking out everything that he's he's put multiple changes and stuff on. And I'm like, right. God, dude, right. how long have you been working on this? He's like, well, yeah. some of these panels, it's, it's been over a year. Yeah. And I'm sitting here yeah. as an editor like, well, that would explain why I'm not, you know, Oh, ripping it apart because he's already done it himself. <laughs> you right, right. And you know, Abbo brings up a good point. I had someone ask on a panel one time uh, on a show. I don't remember which one it was. But they were talking about how do you find your style? And my answer has always been the same thing. We all learn to write the same way. Mm -hmm. But by the time you're an adult and you're signing your name, your signature is just there. It developed organically. It's not something you forced to happen. Style yeah. is the same thing. Just draw and your style will just happen. Now, if your style is to be wrong, then make corrections. Adjust your style. But your style is still exactly. your style. Well, I made a caveat <laughs> off that. You know, you know, uh, for the longest time, I didn't like my style. You know, I thought, well, it's not going to be pleasing to other people. And I, I only in recent years have I made the decision to you know, stop caring what other people think about it and, and enjoy my own stuff. And, sure. uh, and, sure. and, you know, I sent you the, or showed you the, the sketches I did of, uh, my, my newer yeah. character that's in development yeah. right now. Um, yes. I'm, I'm doing it with, with a lot of joy, you know, kind of like how you feel about doing uh damn very thing. You know, I'm, I'm reinvigorated, you know, to yes. do yes. it again. It's a whole different thing when you're enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. You know, it, uh, Pariah is a good story, but th that particular scene that everybody knows about, it was hard to draw oh, yeah. emotionally, psychologically. It was just hard to, to get through it. Um, okay, I got an echo coming from somewhere. Uh, but yeah. it's totally different. And that thing. ring again because of your headphones. Oh, Jesus. Wiley. <laughs> I actually, I was, being, I actually I was being polite, but you're a boomer. It's all right. Damn it. <laughs> uh, we're almost at the end of the show. We'll just deal with it, boys and girls. Okay. Yeah, it takes forever Tony, to finish. Tony, Tony giving me tinnitus as we speak, but hey, like, right. uh, you know, you just take your, <laughs> take that migraine as a gift from the doctor. <laughs> I need the, some of that uh, sheet you're always waving about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm on Windows 11 now from Windows 7. When I was on Windows 7, I could just plug in the headphones and switch it in StreamYard. Poof. Problem solved. Oh, no, no. You, not not yeah, with Windows I, 11. You know what to do with yourself, Doug. <laughs> yeah. I've you, got, like, voice beta banana. It's a virtual mixing board. Like, so you run everything through this virtual mixing board and like getting your head around the idea that it's a virtual mixing board like is like a bit of a challenge you know? if it's yeah. something physical in front of you you can sort of see it but the, the, the digital one took me a while to get the, the I don't I don't understand way. how adding five or six steps to do something is an improvement Windows 11 over Windows 7 no you're absolutely right on that <laughs> I, I hear that it's like if I if if I'm downloading a reference image, I go and I find what I'm looking for, and I find two or three versions of it. Like this particular car, I want it from a few angles so I can get a feel for it. And I go to download on Windows Seven. It's right click, save as, poof, it goes. <laughs> Not with Windows Eleven. It's right click, save as, and then it goes to the download folder. You have to open the download folder, uh, find where it's at, open in folder, and then tell it where to go. Say why. Why did you do this to me? Just to, so you have to mix it up a bit, dog. I see what you guy was happening. It, it, it evolved the guy. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the algorithm fucking with me, Manicor. It, it is. It is. It's so, all right. I'll put in a good word for you. It'll be, it'll be okay. <laughs> 
when the robot overlords take over, you know, if I'm not dead at the outset of it, get you the cushy jobs. Yeah, give me a cushy <laughs> job. You know, washing dishes, you know, <laughs> lubing the robot's knees. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Next. General repairs and maintenance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw somebody uh, posted this, and I meant to download it and save it, but it was very apt. It said, you know, we're taking the wrong approach on AI. I want AI to do my dishes and clean the house so I have more time to do my art and to write. I don't want AI to do my art and write so I have more time to wash dishes and clean the house. Right? <laughs> That's backwards. <laughs> See, that's the thing. They actually predicted that it would be better. Like when they first started, it'd be better at those sort of jobs, like the, the menial labor, sort of like repetitive sort of jobs. But it's turned out that the generative AI aspect of it and like the artwork side, music, all of it is like starting to really like take off. Like, I've been toying around with Suno music, like, and that is a mind blower, that one. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's, it's a little frightening. I mentioned earlier that, you know, when we do our babe barista of the week, I have to go shopping for a blonde or brunette or redhead. It's not as easy as you would think. And now AI images are starting to pop in there, you know? And I'm like, when they're the little bitty oh, ones, on the screen, you click on it and you can't tell it's AI until you blow it up. It's like, you don't look quite human to me. Well, I like there it for the practical still, aspects like, like of it. They can tell pretty well. Sorry, Tanner. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying this. This. Oh. Wait, what, Stephen? <coughs> a, a sketchy guy. A sketchy guy says, "My kids uh, give me crap for saying thank you to Surrey." I still yes. say it too. Yes. I say it to Chat GPT all the time. <laughs> well, I, I use Chat GPT, and what I I love about it is like you use it for you know it's a tool you know so you, you yeah. know it's not like writing for me but it's like i can have it you know within seconds compress all this data for me you know where i'm like yeah. um for example i i don't know I, I can't even think of how i used it the other day but i i basically i had it you know i i, I had it take some uh like a, a bunch of data and then i wanted it to use that data um with uh with marketing and then military tactics <laughs> and i and i let the computer you can, you can throw it, it all together you can, you oh, can ask it that, to set up a like that, business plan to get to a thousand subs on youtube sorry <laughs> pops go yeah when i need a wordsmith to word something for me do i go to a wordsmith or do i go to ai thank you thank you very much thank you <laughs> Let me tell you what I do with chat GPT. I go in and argue with it and force it to admit it was wrong. <laughs> I have, you have any case. And though. that's funny. I have, I have out debated. <laughs> chat GPT. It will say, well, you know, it'll, it'll say things like, however, it's important to remember and I'll click stop. And then I say important to whom that's a subjective term. Why did you even bother putting that in there? I didn't ask it'll you. Keep, it'll keep you around because you're entertaining, though. I yeah. asked it to do crazy <laughs> shit, like mix. I said, G "Give me." A, I said, "Chat GPT, give give me a synopsis of Ernest Hemingway if mixed with Rob Liefeld." <laughs> 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 and then I see, you know. <laughs> okay, real quick, guys. Real quick. Uh, one more time. Uh, the, the poll is still going right now. We need our barista of the week. Our brunette from last week is in the uh, finals already. So we have three. Three new contenders. Here we go. We've got our brunette. We've got our lovely and tiny little girl uh, redhead. Yeah. And, we, and, we've, and we've got our, our blonde who couldn't understand the process of making coffee so she just went to stand in the shower uh so be sure you get over to the madness comic network and vote vote the redhead with the crooked belly button and the big old botox lips is somehow ahead i don't get it well you know i can't figure out why pops there's just something i can't put my finger on it 
Maybe it's, it's the cup. Maybe it's the cup, Doc. It's the cup. That's what it is. That's what it is. No, Brian. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. Oh man. <laughs> you serious? <laughs> Actually, the brunette is in last place going into the final minutes. Um, oh, man. The ginger yes. is ahead. The blonde is in second. And and the brunette's trailing hardcore. She's way back there. She, you know. Good. I've had enough of brunettes for a while. Hey, uh, Sketchy guys, you know, talking about manners with Siri. We have Alexa. We have a little dot. You know, yeah. And it's handy. You know, you can say set an alarm or give me a timer for whatever. It alerts me when there's deliveries at the doors, all this kind of cool stuff. Um, but I don't know about Siri, but Alexa has a sense of humor. You can say, Alexa, fire photon torpedoes. And she'll say, firing photon torpedoes. And you'll hear the sound effect from Star Trek, firing photon but then if you say fire phaser, she goes firing phasers. Pew 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 pew. pew. <laughs> Siri's just sarcastic. Yeah. I had a while. Uh, wow, <laughs> if, right. if you have if you have Alexa <laughs> if you have Alexa, you, you, you summon her and then you say, Here's looking at you, kid, and she'll come back with we'll always have Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wonder if it, it'd do Shakespeare and stuff like that. That'd be interesting. I, I think so. I mean, I, I've had fun playing with it. Uh, you know, and Chat you, you can. He does. <laughs> like, Alas, Yorick, I knew him well. Like, <laughs> like, like now, I said, the, I've, I've taken like cheesy image, image comic ideas, yeah. had it, you know, translated into like great literature, and I just laugh wow. my ass off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you can uh, you can get uh, open two instances of Chat GPT and get it to start taking an opposing point of view to what you postulate because it always will. But do the opposites and then just start cutting, pasting, and have them argue with each other. <laughs> have, you seen the, have you seen the guys that um, oh, they they put the voice through to it like cause you can you can, now you can hook it up to voice so it talks to you right like, and you can yeah. choose the voice or whatever huh. but not only that you can ask it to breathe and have human like inflections so like it'll say um and like do shit like that and you, you can't yeah. really even tell like, it's uh, very very close like, but that's not on the free perfect. version is it um yes i'm pretty sure it is if the free paid version like, because the one I, I use is just the, just the text. Send me a link, uh, Manicore. That's yours is yours is cheap. Yeah, that's what I use. It's GPT three. Like that's the um. Sorry, I don't mean to blame. Uh, GPT three is the um free version because they give that to the public for free. Um, mm -hmm. we're up to four now, and five is coming soon apparently. But Sam yeah. Altman's been holding it back. It's it was supposed to be out already. So, but yeah, I think if they you, hit AI already, and he's hiding it. Yeah, um, if you if you've got a free one, Manicore, that'll do all that stuff. Send me a link to it. Yeah, I'll do. I'll send it to you. Yeah, because uh, I, I I just like effing with it. I don't use it for anything. I just argue with it. <laughs> I, I was paying for it for a while, and it's pretty good. But the free version is just as good for like information. You just don't use it for anything like where you're going to get pulled up for like if it's, it has to be factual 100 percent because sometimes it tends to embellish or like. Oh, it lies. Yeah. It lies. Yeah, he says it yeah. bellish. Look, he's covering for the <laughs> No, seriously, let me tell you. Um, I was trying to remember a, a line of dialogue from Casablanca without having to go watch the movie. And yeah. I asked it, hey, in the scene in Casablanca when they go to a Senor Ferrari's Blue Parrot Club, blah, 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 blah. It typed out a dialogue scene that doesn't exist. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> so I start going back and forth with it. And it finally goes, yeah, I don't know. I just made that up. It basically said, it I don't know. I just made yeah. it up. That's not what I, I asked you to do. It's what, what it does was, better. It's like, what if I was a college yeah. student researching this and you fed me false information under the auspice of, Oh, it's real. No, 
it's not real. Stephen B. It's like, oh, you cheeky little minx here. Stephen, <laughs> Chat GPT is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen me wrong. I, I, never, I didn't realize I was, I didn't realize I was, I was uh, muted. Yeah. <laughs> were you muted? I didn't realize you were muted either. <laughs> I was like, Steven's really quiet though. Chat GPT is a liar. Uh, 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 I don't trust AI any further than I can throw it. Ask it some questions about the universe and the nature of reality, dog. I, I asked uh, oh, I asked the following question. I said, in the most sardonic ma manner possible, please answer the following question. What yep. is the nature of the universe? And it responded, 42. Me too? <laughs> well, what were you using? Chat GPT. Really? That's the universal answer, though. Yeah, I mean, it was right. Yeah, it was yeah, right. It be right <laughs> once in a while, Doc. Yeah, it's yeah. Even a, even a, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, tell, I, it, tell it to explain the nature of the universe to you, like you're a five year old. Like, yeah, yeah, that's the kind of stuff I do with it, and then I and then I argue with it. But like, uh, when it when it adds its own little leftist monologue at the end of every answer. However, yeah, yeah. It's important to remember that blah blah blah. I will always jump all over that. Why do Human you keep bias. saying that? Oh my God, come on. Who is it important yeah. to? I didn't yeah. ask you for your opinion on what's important, and what's not, and it'll it'll get defensive. It'll say, "I apologize." Uh, blah, 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 blah 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 blah. Yeah, it's not open AI anymore, Doc. Get with the times. It's closed AI now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's funny if you go ask it about uh, new developments. The uh, the funding for DEI and and public universities in Texas were cut by executive order. We're not funding this anymore. Nope. So yep. go take that topic to chat GPT and it'll tell you you're wrong. Oh man. I, I can <laughs> tell you exactly. So I, I asked it merchandising <laughs> revenue strategies and it, it basically compiled the, uh, the internet's information for me. <laughs> yeah. It, it has uses when you're retrieving information or whatever. It's too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's persuasive too. It's persuasive. Yeah. Apparently, I saw it. Make sure, it. make sure what it says is true. <laughs> yeah, it'll lie. It'll lie to you. Yeah, no, just get an arm, army of them to show you comics for you. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I would never ask ChatGPT to write for me because I've seen how it expresses itself. My brain does not work that way. That is not words that would ever come out of my mouth or out of my brain. <laughs> Not the words of a wordsmith. Right. Just saying. Whoa. If I want the words of a wordsmith, I go to somebody who writes because they're good at. It. I'm a writer. A perfect example. A perfect example is like what Doc was saying before. Like you know how you, you like you're refining things. Like uh, you can do the, the uh, like the same thing with ChatGPT. Like uh -huh. you know what I mean. You can like chisel things down or change the like the, the tone or. Uh, you know what I mean? It's it's a tool. Like it's like resizing something in Photoshop. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. If you uh, by the way, if you want to have fun, <clears throat> go to a any site that gives you song lyrics. Pick one of your favorite songs. Cut and paste the lyrics into Chat GPT and ask them to ask it to interpret the song. <laughs> and it will prove to you. It'll prove to you it has no soul. Uh, it, it, it will miss the meaning of the song. Now, it, it, it might get one or two. How long ago was this, though? And this was on the it's gone, three. It's gotten better. Version three. Like, I yeah. asked it to interpret the lyrics to uh, How Would Be Thy Name by Iron Maiden. And it completely missed the point that this guy's on death row and about to go out to his death. It's just, you know, he's sad. Uh, he's talking about his life filled re with, with regrets and blah, blah, blah. blah. No, he's about to go to the gallows. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> missed the yeah. entire point of the song. I, um, I was toying around with that sooner the AI stuff, and I, I don't know if you've seen any of them. Like, I was trying to like, I was just doing experiments with like, if you give it set words, like a few like in a sentence, like because it's only text prompts. So like, I'll give it a sentence of like keywords that are like generally what I want the song to be about, whether that be like reflections in in like water or like 
and like or moonlight and, and it'll put it all together in a way that like is pretty deep man like but that's the suno version like the music like yeah it's pretty cool oh i just thought of what i'm going to do i may you know what it's getting late on the stream next week i'm going to do it i'm going to get chat gpt to tell me a fictional story of how G chat gpt would take over the world and subjugate humans <laughs> You get some human bias in there. Yeah, you you you're on Sin Isis. It is, Doc Blaylock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The things they hate me. All right, Pops, let's close out that poll and declare our winner. Uh, right now we have eight votes. It's your last chance. Go to the Madness Comic Network on YouTube and vote. Show them again, Doc. Show them again. There you Already go. doing it. I mean, just fellas, who do you want bringing you your coffee in the morning? No, Brian. <laughs> now, I can't vote, but I'd vote for the blonde. Okay, so it would be a tie if I was allowed to vote. Stop, stop trying to sway the votes, oh, Bob. damn. All right. I'm just saying, I was allowed. I can't vote in my own poll, but if I was allowed right. to vote, uh, there'd be another vote for the blind. That's election, election tampering. You know, I don't even know who I would vote for in that. I really don't. Um, I, is it too many. I'm too old. I've, had, I've 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 been around the world a little bit too much, boys and girls. All right, I've I've, I've met too many women. It's like, yeah, all of y'all look crazy. Too many women. You all look crazy to me, so I don't want your matching crazy ass bringing me coffee. I don't know what's in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's make sure you like cheers them first or something. Yeah. I'm I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say I wouldn't be mad at any of them for bringing me coffee in the morning. I wouldn't be mad at them, but you know. I All right, so, let's, let's, let's go ahead. I'd be like, oh, that's nice. Thank let's you. go ahead and close the poll and declare our winner. All right. Right now, the ginger, the ginger is the winner. Now, didn't I predict that? Yes. There she is. Oh, by Jesus. Your babe barista of the week. See, Halder missed out, too. Halder didn't get to vote either. She, she. <laughs> How dear. What's up, buddy? Hail. All right. So, by the way, this is important. Stephen B. Yeah. The floor is yours. All right. <clears throat> so, I find, so, I know who, uh, I'm going to challenge for, for the Indy Cockfight. All right. Ooh. Who are you calling out? Who are you calling, I'm calling out, Steven? I'm calling out Apex. Apex. Apex Comics. <laughs> Apex Ooh. Comics, you have been called out to Indy Cockfights. Oh. Stephen B of Boldcat Studios. All right. A little trash talk, Stephen. I, I don't have any right now. Okay. All right. Give it to him, right. Stephen. Give him a gut punch. <laughs> I'll help you out. I'll help you out because what? He's, he's even older than I am. So here's what you say, Stephen. You say, bring your old arthritic ass over here and try to draw better than me. I thought oh, for yeah. sure Stephen was going to go after Rex. I thought it was going to be the Devil Flyer versus the Crips and Legends. No, 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 no. Rex is not really doing books he doesn't do the art we'll go, so. hound, we'll go hound him like ali did to listen all right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> stephen b make sure you let anthony know uh -huh. and make sure that word gets to apex i will try to pass the word also <coughs> uh and uh yeah we look forward to seeing that that fight happen tomorrow night on uh Dark Gift Comics presents. I forget the time. I think it's eight or nine. Uh, Indie cockfights uh, is going to be a Lazmat versus Narwhal. So that ought to be fun. Yeah. Other fights we've got coming up. 
Other fights we got coming up, Jason Bascom versus Peter Gilmore. That's going to be incredible. And then we've got uh, Matt Barr versus Jim O'Reilly. Two oh, wow. fantastic commercial artists going head to head. So Jim O'Reilly said yes then? So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it was like on the fence. Yeah, okay, cool, that's good. No, Jim, Jim O'Reilly, this was his response. Matt Barr reached out to him <laughs> in, in his PMs, and he said, "Hey, this is Matt. I just wanted to talk to you about the cockfights." And uh, Jim waited a day and then responded and said, "Who the fuck is Matt Barr?" <laughs> 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 Who are you? Zing. <laughs> Zing, indeed, yeah. All right, boys and girls, I want to thank my co host, Tanner Hurley, as always, sir. Pops, thank you for uh, being the producer that you are and hosting the show. Matacor, good to see you again, my friend. Don't be a yeah. stranger. Always, always All good right. to see you, dog. Stephen, be good too, to man. see you. Good Chat. To see you, you guys absolutely rock. You're the reason that we do all of this. Oh, the chat. Hey, all the mighty chat. Peace out, everybody. Hey. Look, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm tired of talking to you. And don't think it hasn't been a little slice of heaven, because it hasn't. Well, what do you know? I finally got the last word.